happens. All right, here we are. <laughs> okay, welcome. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I literally think it's part of our brand at this point <laughs> because we can never get technology to work when we're supposed to. <laughs> Dr. Judy, technical difficulties, Morgan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyway, thanks for joining us. So we have a special guest here today, which is Logan, our party cocker. He has joined our team and his mom, Jenny. So she uh, has agreed to bring him in so we could tell a little bit about his story. So Logan was one of the ones when I talked a few months back about all the NutriScan testing we did for all of our animals. Um, he was one of the ones that I was very interested in because his veterinarian recommended that he be on a hydrolyzed protein diet uh, because of potential food allergies. And this is something that we get this question all the time. And a lot of the traditional veterinarians, if you bring a pet in that's itching or has a rash, something of the sort, they really like to jump to these prescription diets. So we have two cases, two different cases today. Plus, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about your case yesterday with itching. Um, Lord. But we have had quite a few uh, people contacting us. Their dog is showing potential allergy symptoms and they're diagnosed with allergies but then when they start trying to treat the allergies they're not seeing improvements right. that's because that's not actually the root cause of the symptoms right so i have a question since logan's mom is here did they do allergy testing on him like any blood testing skin test nothing just immediately went to food allergy yeah so logan <sighs> presented he had um a bump on his lip that was red and swollen and inflamed that he had to get removed and then he developed a rash so those were the the two things that led up to him being put on a hydrolyzed protein diet uh, and when we did the NutriScan testing on him it came up perfect completely clear he had no food sensitivities show up at all and so as a, a test we had Jenny start to feed him some proteins to see if he would react he used to get hot spots and other things like that um, and so far he's had no reactions um, so his is a really good example of jumping to conclusions without having some of that food sensitivity testing or any testing or diagnostics it was just instantly um and so jenny did he get put on steroids or apoquel or yeah yep so steroids and apoquel a lot of the the classic traditional allergy treatments right cytopoint so this is gabby and many of you know gabby she's our english toy spaniel that we adopted and gabby is the itchiest dog i have <laughs> ever owned except myra when she first came because her allergies were out of control but with this one if we just pet over there oh it's like a it's a button it's a it's the push button <laughs> for scratching <laughs> gabby cannot wear a collar gabby has cm see the shape of this head this is a bubble um and a lot of these Good dogs push. with well first of all a lot of english toy spaniels and a lot of cavalier king charles spaniels have uh caudal occipital malformation which is where the back of the skull comes down sorry comes down <laughs> straight and it actually impinges on the brain stem and the brain stem sticks out through the the skull normally it should be i'm sorry i got you started it should be completely within the skull um, and so they get neurologic pain and they will scratch at it they'll rub their she'll she'll go along the walls and rub her head she's trying to connect with that area but one of the ways we can tell that this is not an allergy problem for her is one her skin never gets red. It doesn't break out. There's no ear infection. She's one-sided and I can make her scratch just by touching her. She cannot wear a collar because any pressure here will make her scratch. Even a harness, this poor harness, the ruffle has been destroyed on the left. It's the color is coming off of it because she always scratches on the left side. So she only wears the harness when we're out and about because that's the only way I can keep an eye ID tag on her. I'm so sorry, sweetie. So um, are the, and so for syringomyelia, which the Cavaliers get a lot, that the itching is part of that too. Right. It's phantom scratching. Right. So we see a lot of Cavaliers and there's other small breed dogs as well. Oh, anybody with the rounded head. So Brussels Griffons, Pugs, um, French Boston, Bulldogs, Frenchies, Boston Good Bulls, uh, anybody with the rounded heads can have CM or SM. Um, it was originally thought to be just a cavalier disease well now we're finding out that there are 
literally dozens of breeds and mixed breeds that can be afflicted by this. I have seen so many cases of dogs being put on Apoquel, Cytopoint, steroids. The, the bad news, I mean good and bad, is that Apoquel may actually decrease the symptoms of SM and CM. However, we're also destroying the immune system, we're uh, predisposing them to cancer by having them on those drugs. Steroids will help a lot because it decreases the inflammation and the swelling in that area. So again, it's not a good drug to use as the test for could this be SM, could this be an allergy. So you really either need to get an MRI if you have one of those breeds who might be predisposed to this. You could do a trial with uh, gabapentin or pregabalin. The problem is most veterinarians are not familiar with this disease. Right, yeah, and some people have never even heard of it, so they don't know where to go next when all the allergy treatments aren't working right. because their dog's still scratching. Right. Or the prednisone helps because that can be a treatment for SM and CM. I don't go there uh, because we don't want these dogs living on steroids for a lifetime, but they'll get better. So the veterinarian says, well, aha, it's allergies, we'll keep them on steroids, and we don't want to do that. So that brings us to my third case from yesterday. This was a consultation that I did. Four-month-old mixed breed uh, puppy, uh, now about a 60-pound dog, was adopted about a year ago. And at four months old, this dog came in in very bad shape, had whipworms, hookworms, giardia, so you know, gut dysbiosis, immune system kind of trashed. And the dog was extremely itchy from day one. As a puppy. As a puppy at yeah. four months old. Now, environmental allergies and food allergies are very rare in dogs less than about 15 months old particularly the environmental allergies. It's something you have to be exposed to repeatedly in order to develop an allergy. Your body says, oh my gosh, I've been bombarded, I can't take it anymore. We do see food intolerances, particularly with chicken in young puppies, particularly if they've been over vaccinated uh, with all these parasites, immune system dysfunction. Uh, so we, we can see a food intolerance, but that's probably going to show up more as diarrhea, vomiting, like I eat this food, I can't tolerate it, my body spits it back out. This dog has been scratching incessantly, eight out of 10 itch score. Went to the veterinarian who I went and looked at their website. Their website says, we love dermatology cases. That's one of our specialties. Okay. <laughs> so the dog went in, they did the weirdest allergy panel I have ever seen. Uh, it was through IDEX and it tested mites, molds, weeds, and grasses. Not individual ones, just a category, Categories. grass, mold, mite, trees. And I was like, and it came up positive three out of four. So. Well, yeah, because those are pretty broad categories. They're very broad categories. <laughs> and it said, recommend immunotherapy. I'm like, what are you, what immunotherapy are you using? You don't know which trees, grasses, weeds, molds, mites, whatever. Uh, and the dog was on a, um, a baked kibble type of food. But those are very commonly um, in, Will, are contaminated with storage mites. Once you open that bag, you're gonna get storage mites within a couple of weeks. So for these allergy dogs, that's one of the reasons why getting them off the dry food helps because we get rid of the storage mites. So, so I said, okay, well, and I have all the records. I said, any other testing done? And I forget what the dog, I think the dog was still eating the same food. Um, and there's no other testing. And I said, they didn't do a scrape for Demodex. They didn't do a tape prep to look for sarcoptic mange. I really think this dog has sarcoptic mange. I think this dog came with a parasite on its skin and I don't care how, and it's been treated with Apoquel. So the, you know, they go in, they instantly test for environmental allergens and start the dog on Apoquel. It's a one year old dog. We don't wanna start Apoquel that early. We don't wanna sentence this dog to this, especially without doing a good workup. Um, so after we had our chat, I, she's actually going back to the vet in a couple of weeks. And I said, okay, well, when you're there, you need to get a tape prep. You need to get a skin scraping. We need cytology of the skin. We need more diagnostics. The, we haven't done a good diagnostic workup and mites can be very difficult to find. So tape prep, skin scrapings, you might do a dozen of those. When our dogs had sarcoptes, it took me four months to find a freaking mite. Four months to find a mite. So what are the, if, so for people that are listening to this and, and they're resonating and say, oh, my dog is still itching, even though we've treated for allergies, 
Are there any other symptoms of like a mite or a skin so, parasite yes. other than itching? So the Demodex, a lot, that's in young dogs. It's not transmissible between dogs or people. Uh, and it'll usually show up as little hairless areas that we'll see, but it can progress to the whole dog being bald and red and infected. With Sarcoptes, a lot of times they'll look like they have a little tiny, tiny, tiny white dandruff because the, those mites are actually visible with the naked eye, but they're very, very tiny. Um, so you might think that your dog just has dandruff when actually it has mites. There's something called a um, pedal pinnal reflex. This is the pinna of the ear. The pedal is pedal, foot. Um, and if you rub along this margin of the ear, and all of a sudden, she's just like, oh, that feels she's good. Like, oh, but a dog with sarcoptes, this is a place where they like to hang out. Very commonly, you do this, and that back foot will just go nuts. Interesting. So they like to hang out on the edge of the ear. They'll hang out everywhere, but that happens to be a okay. place where you can usually get this response. The other thing to look at in that dog in particular is the scratching, well, in her too, is the scratching year-round. Because mm. if it's an environmental allergy, it's going to come and go with the seasons. Depending on molds, we usually see more problems. I mean, here with the humidity, yeah. we could see it in the summer. More frequently. But. but you definitely see it more in the fall when the leaves are down. If you're in an area with leaves and the molds from them wet laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, grass allergies are going to be a bigger problem in the spring. You know, Anything that makes pollen in the spring, they're going to have a bigger problem in the spring. Food allergies, going to be all year round. And right. uh, this is a general rule of thumb, not 100%. Food allergies, the problems tend to be from the neck forward. You get a lot of itching around the eyes, the ears, this area. Uh, they can go over the whole body. And then environmental allergies, more commonly you're getting the feet licking and you'll get kind of the whole body breaking out. <laughs> um, you know, Gabby is not seasonal with her itching. <laughs> <laughs> this is an all year round touch very the left targeted, side of the neck. Yeah. Very targeted. Hi, um, So, all of our dogs have CMSM in our household. And it is what it is. Uh, they're, they're very happy. They live with it. Uh, we treat with PEA, everything all natural. Nobody's on medications right now. And there is a blog on the website, Brandon. If you could copy and paste the link to the Syringomyelia blog. Um, and also the NutriScan testing, which is the, here, I'm going to put him down so we can go see his mommy. <laughs> um, mommy, you're not here. <laughs> he's going to, he's, he's a mommy's boy. Um, but also we'll put a link to the NutriScan testing. That's the testing that we like to use for food sensitivities. Like I said, Logan um, was on a hydrolyzed protein diet because they uh, thought that he had food allergies. And when we ran the test, it was actually completely clear. So that opened up his diet potential hugely. Um, but we see this all the time with, with people struggling um, with their dogs, whether it's itchy or a rash. Rash is a big one too. That could be um, a variety of things and a lot of people don't do diagnostics on right. rashes like they probably should. Um, you can you can do skin scrapes and you can culture the skin too, can't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so if, if it's bacterial got, if, yeah, or... If you, if, so they should do a cytology first, which basically is taking a slide and pressing, you know, parting the hair or finding a gooey spot, press the slide against the skin, take it, stain it, look under the microscope. Do we have bacteria? Do we have yeast? Do we have abnormal cells? Could this be a skin cancer that is showing up? Lymphoma, lymphosarcoma of the skin can look like skin infections. And mm -hmm. if you're treating over and over and over, uh, autoimmune disease, pemphigus, lupus can be sores on the skin. Um, so sometimes we have to go so far as to doing a skin biopsy if they're having this particularly ulcerated lesions. Severe, severe issues, so, yeah. So the, basically, long story short, if your dog is experiencing some classic allergy symptoms, whether that's a rash, uh, itching, things like that, it could be a variety of issues. It doesn't necessarily mean that you jump straight to allergies. Somebody needs to go get the door. Oh, USPS is here. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Just coming to that door. <laughs> um, they found us. They found us. Um, so the, I, the moral of the story really is is push for those diagnostics, right? You yeah. really want to get more information yeah. as to what you you're don't want to sentence your pet to a hydrolyzed diet for the rest of your pet and your checkbook to a yeah. hydrolyzed diet for the rest of their life when it's not a food allergy problem. Uh, if you have a mite problem, you want to get that treated. Otherwise, yeah. and I, I have had so many of those cases that I've done consultations with, and I'm like, please go get diagnostics. There is, if you can't find the mites on the skin test, there is actually a um, blood test that can be done looking for antigens to the mites. Um, oh, it's, uh, interesting. It, I think it was bat labs, uh, not 
not very many veterinarians are aware of it, but I, I Googled it and found the lab yesterday to send to this person so that she could have the testing done. Um, and particularly if you have a blood test done and it says your dog is allergic to storage mites or dust mites, that allergy may also be to mites who are on the dog topically. Oh, okay. So That's a good point. It, does, it doesn't discern that. It's gotcha. just you're going to get mites. So, uh, so lots of things to take into consideration for those of you with breeds that are kind of built like this. <laughs> definitely, you know, if you've got They're a lot like of scratching, <laughs> but the skin isn't broken out, they're not bright red, they're not developing sores, there's no ear infection. I've seen so many dogs treated for ear infections that don't exist. Uh, I've seen them put on medications for allergies that don't exist. I've seen, I've had people uh, come to me with their dogs on immunotherapy, which is expensive and unnecessary because their dog has SM or CM that's not right. being treated. So we, 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 we need to be treating the right disease. Diagnosing, <laughs> diagnosing the right disease so that way you can treat it properly and not spend a bunch of time and money treating the wrong thing. Right. And you still have an animal that's struggling with your All right. Itching. So um, Jonathan Sherry Beck says, my cavalier keeps getting stinky yeasty ears, can't get rid of it, help. So that probably is a food allergy. Yeasty ears, 90 to 95% of the time are a food allergy. Um, and ear in, ear infection, true ear infections can be bacterial, can be other size. things, right? But um, the, these yeasty ears, I would get carb, starchy carbs out of the diet, 100%. So get rid of dry kibble. Uh, if you're feeding one of the premixes uh, to to make your own food or some of the freeze dried foods, if they've got potatoes and lentils and peas in them, if you can get that out of the diet, uh, nine times out of ten those yeast problems will go away. Uh, for a long time, people were blaming the yeasty ears and allergies on grains, so everybody went to grain-free. Well, now these dogs are allergic to potatoes and peas and lentils, so yeah. uh, we didn't really solve the problem. There's also um, Jonathan Checkout on the website. Brandon's with Mr. USPS, so he can't post the link, but uh, I'll post it after this. Uh, Dored Beast has a wonderful yeast protocol. It's super simple to follow. Uh, it's a little kit that get, comes with the directions and it helps basically the yeast die off in their system slowly so you don't have um, excessive yeast die off all at once. Yeah, if you kill it all at once, you'll, you, you'll you have other issues. You can have kind of other issues from that. So it's a really wonderful protocol for anyone struggling with yeast. Uh, it can be used for, for all sorts of yeast issues. So right. definitely check that out. So somebody else brought up a good thing. Um, Apoquel and and prednisone, when used long term, can actually cause your dogs to break with Demodex. It can also cause them to break with ringworm, fungal infections. Oh. So I had a Doberman who had granulomatous meningoencephalitis put on high dose, so that's uh, basically his brain was inflamed. Secondary to vaccines. So he was put on very high doses of prednisone. This was, I was out of school for like three years at the time, so <laughs> I didn't, didn't know much. Um, <laughs> Still and, learning. And so the dog, after a couple of months, besides drinking and peeing incredible amounts of water, um, he developed, a, he lost all his hair and developed a fungus and his ears went bald, his head was bald, he had ringworm over his entire body uh, because his immune system was so suppressed. So when we suppress that immune system, we open them up to things like cancer, bacterial infections, fungal infections, yeast infections, demodex, which is a problem of suppressed immune system. So uh, you really need to try to solve the underlying problem and not be sentenced to having a pet who's on prednisone and uh, Apoquel and other uh, immune modulating agents long term. Um, somebody said their dog was on, uh, has poly, polyarth immune mediated polyarthritis. <laughs> Um, and so uh, we've had quite a few cases this week of immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, which is platelets being killed off. We've had immune-mediated anemia. We're seeing more and more autoimmune disease. Uh, and it's because our dogs are being, ex dogs and cats are being exposed to more chemicals, more pollutants, uh, over vaccination, uh, processed, diets. processed diets. There's so many things that go into that. So the goal is to solve the problem. Yes, you might need to use some steroids to save their life in the throes of the beginning of the disease when they don't have any platelets and they don't have any red blood cells. But then the goal is to rebalance the system, use herbs, use acupuncture, use diet 
to get them through that and then keep them from relapsing. Mm -hmm. uh, so very, very, very important. And unfortunately in traditional medicine, I see these animals put on immunosuppressive doses of these drugs and then left on them for literally months to years. Um, and when I have dealt with those cases in the past, they get that high dose of steroids to kind of turn, turn off the, the engine that's driving the problem. Uh, but we get them off very quickly, monitor very closely. And uh, I had one interesting case. The dog had uh, immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, came in with a very low uh, platelet count. And so we used herbs. Um, the dog had been on steroids. They wanted to get him off. So we took him off the herbs. We used herbs and put him on a blood tonic diet and some herbs. Dog did great. Immediate turnaround. Did great for a few months. And then the dog relapsed brought mm -hmm. back in. I said, well, have you changed anything? Well, they went back to processed food. Yeah. The other food, the raw food was too expensive. They went back to processed food. And just shot the immune system into overdrive. Dog crashed. Yep. Dog crashed. So I said, all right, get it. go through this again. And dog did great. Six months later, comes back, it's crashed again. I'm like, what'd you change? Well, we can't afford that food. Dog crashed again. And I said, well, you've got a choice. You can either afford that food or every few months you're going to be here spending a lot of money with me getting this lab work, doing all the follow-up lab work, potentially having your dog hospitalized in an ICU somewhere because mm -hmm. it's bleeding out. I said, I'm pretty sure the food is a much better way to go. So, yeah, um, I did, I it's a, he, he Brandon locked himself, himself out now. Uh, <laughs> so, it's just us. <laughs> so diet is, is critical for these guys. Um, you really need to have a high quality human grade non-contaminated diet if you have dogs with allergies, autoimmune disease, uh, anything where their immune system is not um, functioning appropriately. Okay, Gwen, I don't know if you want to yeah, run around there and the turn computer. us off because <laughs> we've lost Brandon to the post office land. Um, all right, everybody have a wonderful day. There is um, a link for NutriScan with a discount code on drjudymorgan.com. Um, so make sure you uh, get your discount. And I will um, post that one more time for people and then we will head off. Oh, I also, I'm going to post real quick the, uh, the yeast protocol to... Okay, Gwen's posting a bunch of links for you guys. Um, All right. I'm trying to work Brandon's computer. I feel like... Oh, here we go. It's working. Okay, there's the link for the yeasty beast protocol as well through Adored Beast. It is absolutely amazing. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your day. Let me close this. Can you say bye, Gab? Bye, Gabs. Are you sure you want to end? Yes. <laughs>